You see me sitting here like this, you know we about to have a chat. We're gonna have a time. another video it's your girl gabby mac it's your first time tuning in welcome to my channel you know we talk about everything ghana 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 and now i think we're more on the business aspect of ghana like living here in ghana and running business here i feel like that's kind of how the channel is going so welcome um today's video is just a sit down video that I owe you guys and if you see me sitting here like this you know we about to have a chat we're gonna have a time so a lot of things to talk about um, I've been getting a lot of emails uh, people asking me about prices and how much I spend what I save um, what places that I got some certain things at, um, trying out different businesses uh, I've started back consulting and I've already had a few calls since the year has started so um i will get all into that too as well you guys tuning in for the first time i moved to ghana uh, roughly about i think six months now. is it six months <laughs> no wait it is wow so i'm gonna make six months i think next week Wow, that's crazy. Time really fast. So it's been six months, guys. It's been six months since I quit my job um, and moved back to Ghana for literally the third time. <laughs> uh, it's so funny every time I say this to myself, but third time is the charm. Yeah, so I've moved back and this time around when I moved back, I decided to start business. All the other previous time, the only thing that really makes a difference is the other times I was working for people. This time around, I'm working for myself, which has always been a dream of mine to start a business here, particularly here in Ghana. Um, I've always had uh, the idea of wanting to start a hair salon, but for the longest, I was like doubting and um, discouraging myself because there is so many salons here in Ghana, like especially here in Accra. There is a lot. Um, and every time there's new ones like springing up, you know, you have your, you know, your old ones that people can still go to and you have the new popular ones that are trending online a lot. So it was discouraging, but, um, it took my friend Nana to be like, look, there's always space for you. And, um, you know, here is something that has, uh, I have been doing for years. It's always been kind of a side thing for me. Um, throughout college, I was doing hair when I got out of college, even with corporate America, like I would still go braid hair after work on the weekends. So it's something I've always enjoyed doing. And finally, I was like, okay, it's time to like start this business. Um, I know a lot of you might think, why did I not start it in the States? Um, it's because I don't want to live there. It's not that I couldn't start it in the States. I just did not want to live in the States for now. Um, I just want to build something here, something solid here in Ghana, um, eventually, you know, buy a home, just set myself up here. Um, and anytime I decide to want to live here, I know I'm set. America is always there. It's still my country. <laughs> I can always go back, but I think, um, I just enjoy living here more and that's the reason I chose to come here. And on top of that, I've seen that there's a lot of space and opportunity to start business here. And that's kind of really the bulk of today's video is to really talk about, um, you know, why I chose here, the opportunities that are here, the dis different business ideas that you can possibly get yourself involved in. I've also done previous videos talking about, um, you know, different businesses that you can get into. I'll drop a few on, in this video as well. So, yes. So, let's jump into that. So, Ultimately, I chose Ghana because I wanted to live here. Um, you know, it's my peaceful place. I just enjoy here. Um, granted, every country has its ups and downs or whatever, but I always say, pick your poison. I chose here. That's my poison. So <laughs> that's pretty much why I really um, choose it. And I can guarantee you most people, when you ask them why do they enjoy coming here or living here, they'll tell you peace of mind, um, the opportunities that is here. Uh, people, you know, throw in, you know, the color card. Color thing has never really been a thing for me, but for some people it is because, I mean, growing up in the States, 
I'm not gonna say that I did um, I did not get looked at differently growing up I definitely did it was more of so because I had an accent because uh, I kept coming back and forth in Ghana I was living here when I was younger I went to school here so like I learned the language and at a point my accent was really really strong so I got made fun of and things like that but um, all throughout, uh, I feel like, um, I mean, yeah, you hear so many stories and so many things happening in America all the time, and, um, and it's always based on race and things. So some people, the reason why they come here because they just don't want to deal with that. When you're here, like, every, you turn around, everyone looks like you. So pretty much, I, I feel like that's why some people choose to come here. Ultimately, that's not my, that's not my main reason. My main reason is the peace of mind that I get, the flexibility I get. Um, the work-life balance that I get when I'm here as opposed to in the States where it's just work, 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 work. So that's why I chose here. Now, why I chose the industry? Because, um, you know, I've always had a thing for beauty and um, hair has always been something I've been, you know, been doing for a long time. So that's what it, it was a no-brainer. It was going to be hair. Granted, I have um, other ideas to get into other sectors of business while I'm here. Eventually, when the um, the salon is in a set place, then I'll get into those as well. But I wanted to start off with, you know, something that I'm super passionate about, something I love doing, and that's why I got into the hair business. Now, um, the, a lot of questions that I've been getting: How much did you spend? What did you save? Um, how did you, um, you know, locate your place and all this thing? So I know some people have not watched the full business vlog video if i were you please go back and just watch it watch it for the sake of just preparing yourself as to the different things that can just pop up because granted the opportunity is here but no one said that it's easy it's not easy anywhere but no one says it's definitely not easy because you have to learn how systems work here um you have to understand how people um, how they think here in general, like the worth ethic and everything. And the thing is, I couldn't have done this without certain people anyway. So it's not like a type of business where I could have just went in and just, just set up the whole thing. This is a business where I needed workers, you know, I needed workers to work at my place, but I also needed workers to work on the project to get the place to look like how it looks now anyway. So that's why I advise that you guys go back and watch the whole business vlog just to just have a sense of certain things that, you know, you might experience or what to prepare yourself with and things like that. So the big, big, big question is dollars, 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 that money, the lajon, how much um, really went into the business. Um, so I'll be frank with y'all. We had a budget. We definitely went over it. <laughs> we went over it. I think I said that in my last video. We, we, we went over it. Um, so I think ultimately it depends on what, what you're going for, what you're designed for, what your, what was your vision in terms of, uh, you know, your shop, who your audience is. So for me, my audience, I want it to be a balance of the everyday Ghanaian and, um, you know, it could also have a luxury feel to it at the same time, but I want a luxury feel that the everyday Ghanaian can afford. Let's put it like that. So that was eventually, that's essentially what I was going for. So because of that, our budget, um, our budget started off at, um, what did it start off at? I think 15,000, I want to say. Yeah, I think it started at 15,000. Um, and eventually we almost got close to 20. Almost, not there, but we almost got close to 20. So for us, what really helped, and I talk about this in my um, my consulting meetings with people, is to you really need a budget plan. Granted, it's kind of hard to figure out prices of certain things because maybe you're not here yet, or you haven't gone to make your you know price it to know what to put in it. Because there was some stuff that we just kind of just created a number out of our head what we thought it would be, or if we knew people would ask them so they could kind of give us an idea. Also, what we did was to say that, hey, this is what we have and let's try to remain in this budget. So that's what we kind of what we did. And then there were some little extra things that came along the way. And that's why the budget ended up going up. And it was like we couldn't do nothing about it. We just the money just had to go up. So I think when starting business here in Ghana, depending on what you're doing, because if you're doing like maybe a buy and sell, most of your money's going really into inventory. For us, we spent a very small amount on inventory. Most of our money went into um, the actual 
completing of the shop the design the you know what makes the place look like what it looks like that's what we really spend our money on because where we got was as you guys can if you go back to the first video where we actually found the place it was not completed like it was just a structure right concrete walls and everything no light no none of that so it was up to, like once we paid our rent it was for our our uh, landlord to go in and cement the whole place pop fix it put lights put do all the wiring and everything so like we got a brand new shop that nobody's ever been so i really really like the fact that we got that but then that put more strain on us to spend money to make it look like how we wanted it to look on top of that space so some places may be smaller so you might not spend as much our place is ultimately not the average size of what a stores are here in Ghana. It was it's actually almost close to a double size. Um, if you if I was if I decided to get a double shop, I, my shop now would look like what it is almost. I think is a, just a tad bit smaller than what a double shop would be. So when most people come, they're like, "Wow, this is huge! This is a double shop." I'm like, "No, it's a single shop." But our landlord like chose to do the shop that size is which. Worked in our favor, but at the same time, it made us spend more money because now that the space was huge, we had to kind of fix it in such a way that we can, you know, kind of enclose it a little bit so it doesn't look so big, which I still feel like there's a lot of space and there's so much more that we can do with it, but we just did enough so we can open and then eventually we'll add certain things um, onto the shop and, you know, add some designs, some photos and things on the wall and things like that to kind of still make it feel a little bit more enclosed like we don't want it to feel crowded and like too much stuff going on but at the same time so i don't want it to feel like it's super empty and it looks like nothing is in the shop so yeah budget of course your what you're going to spend is really important and um i know a lot of people want numbers they want numbers but it's kind of hard to give set numbers because i can't tell you what business like you know i need to know the business that you're in to kind of give you an idea of like what you will spend but for those that are looking into the beauty business depend like i said depending on the shop size what you're willing to pay for rent um and your ultimate design will really kind of um determine where your money's gonna live you know at least where you're starting from and where like where you capping off at so i think ultimately like fifteen thousand is a good number i think it's a pretty decent number that you can do a lot now granted that also will depend on whether you are you're shipping in products in or like your let's say if you open a barbershop if you're going to ship in the chairs your clippers and all the things like that or you're going to buy them here so for us we ultimately bought almost everything here there was just a few things that we bought in the states and that was mostly for like inventory because i thought it would just be cheaper and easier to get them like on amazon or um aliexpress or alibaba so we got stuff like that online but pretty much if you watch the videos you can see we went shopping um everything pretty much was here we searched it you know talked to different people found out the best price and that's what we kind of went for and some places we even went as far as going all the way to 10 months just to even get the chair um you know and the the washer uh, so yeah, and then like the dryers, we went to the Makula Market, we went to Makula Market to get um, hair products and like the braiding hair that we use and all of that. So I shared that part, you know, I was sharing all of that in my videos um, because I wanted you guys to get a sense of how, like some of the things that you have to do when you're getting into business here. I mean, that was for the hair business, but imagine if you were even opening a restaurant you would still have to go to a lot of these places because there's a lot of places here that are not one-stop shop, you know, stores that you can go in and just get everything that you need. You have to shop around. You have to shop at multiple places. You have to maybe go into the market and shop here. Maybe you might find some things online that, you know, they may be able to ship to you, but I always would want to go and see, feel, touch, see the product before paying to get anything delivered to me so we never even had anything ultimately delivered like i saw it online and it just came to me like everything went into the store myself spoke even down to the carpenter spoke to him you know send me pictures of the wood send me examples of how it would look everything like went to i worked with two car carpenters went to another carpenter went there to for him to show me like give me a range of size like what the length would be how, like how so all of that i think 
helps because it avoids mistakes. It avoids people doing stuff and then coming back to you and then you not liking it. So you have to be hands on. That's basically what I'm trying to say here. You need to be hands on when it comes down to working here and doing business here. Yes, you can get someone to manage and get everything done for you, but for your peace of mind and to make sure everything goes according to how you want it to go to, the best advice I can give to you guys is if you're going to start business here, you need to be here, you need to be on ground, you need to be hands on so that everything can go the way you want it to go. Because even me being hands on, there were even still some mishaps here and there. So imagine if I wasn't hands on, guys. Like it, it could, it would have just been a disaster, basically. So that's the ultimate thing that if you decide to want to do business here, that you need to put in your mind. That even goes for my real estate people, my Airbnb people. Like you're looking to get into that business here, you need to be here. Please hear me out, guys. If you are looking to get into anything real estate or Airbnb or anything like that, when it comes down to buying apartments, buying land here in Ghana, please, please do not sit where you are abroad and pay anyone. Be here. See it for yourself. Make sure you're getting the right documentation. Make sure you found the right person that you're paying to because there's too many stories of people paying for lands that has other people have paid for. And you don't want to go through the court system here. You don't want it to be a battle trying to get your money back here. That's the worst thing you can do to yourself. Once again, I repeat, guys, please do not send any money to anyone. If anyone is reaching out to you to tell, I have land you want to buy, no. Be here in Ghana, come and see it. If you cannot see yourself and you have a trustworthy person who can do that job for you, let them do it. Do not pay anyone anything, especially when it comes down to those business, like those two types of businesses. Everything, like anything, even one like paying down to the rent for our store. Like we went, make sure we saw the right person. Make sure we went to put it in his account and everything. The worst thing you can do to yourself is go and give some huge mon some, sums of money to someone. And that's not the person. I've had too many friends and family that have told me stories like that so i'm very very careful so that's one of my biggest advice i give to people especially when i'm consulting i'm telling do not pay money to anyone until you've come down yourself or you have that trustworthy person that's the key thing you guys keep that in mind so yeah um so yeah that's that i had okay so i had a few people also asking ultimately how I, you know how i feel now once the, now that the business is open everything is running the day to day and everything like that Guys, I can tell you, like, I'm officially now exhaling. I'm breathing now. I'm like, whoo, wow. I really did that. Like, we really did all this work. We finally got it open. It was a beautiful opening. Um, it was even still chaotic and crazy till that day. And ever since that, like, we've just been, you know, going along taking each day at a time i'm still training the girls but they're catching on pretty well um i'm there like all the time i'm ultimately still the lead braider i do have two other braiders and an assistant so i am trying to work and build them to a level that they could you know practically be on their own and i don't need to be there then eventually i want to get more girls in there and ultimately i would just be overseeing and making sure that um, you know styles are being done properly bookings are done properly whatever like inventory needs to be done like keeping up with trends whatever we need to do like I still would want to be full hands on but we're you know we're getting to that point and um, I'm, I'm uh, ultimately we're doing well we're doing what I have to say for us just opening we opened to the last week in November and we were just in time for all the diasporans coming into town we are doing well we are doing we're doing pretty well guys and um, we you know we've set budgets for ourselves monthly that we want to make a certain amount of money and I can say that um, we haven't hit the target yet but I think this month we're gonna hit it and um, I mean for someone new like I mean I'm not new to game of braiding but new in the game being here in Ghana and I know how here could be because social media is a big deal here when it comes down to especially the beauty business 
So it's uh, it's been a challenge for us to like make sure we keep up and our social media is like our TikTok and our Instagram is doing well. Eventually we want to get Snapchat. So we have to kind of get into that into that aspect so we can get more um, more customers. But ultimately, I mean, we've been getting a good amount, a good decent amount of people coming in on a daily basis. And um, I think our prices are pretty good. Um, and I think our overall the experience that we give, I think people enjoy it. Um, I've seen a couple of reviews on our Google review and um, people have been giving me great feedback. And then I, you know, I love, I love the people that also give me, um, you know, advice and um oh and an idea to do this and to do this to help the business so i'm taking all of that into consideration so yeah i've been um i've been out on the go that's why i have not really been able to like drop that much videos for you guys we went on a break so here in ghana um most people do like a one week holiday break usually after the christmas and new year just to give their workers some time off because some people work crazy hours one of my friends she was working till 2 a.m. in the morning like I was like wow that's crazy the latest we stayed was like I think 10 maybe almost 11 that was like the latest we ever stayed um, but besides that um, I think we're doing I think we're doing pretty decent I love the fact that so many of you guys have been messaging me and booking appointments some of you have just come to even just visit like oh it's, it's been beautiful to see everyone and seeing that you know when you think people are not watching people are watching people are watching.